All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kem. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 67, UV, Biohydrometallurgical Chemistry at Newgrange. So in previous episodes, number 7, 23, and 29, I provided my interpretation of the series of symbols that are carved into the Newgrange curve stone. I explained the function of Newgrange and the passage chamber structures of Ireland, and I also discussed the applications for the various chemicals that were being produced by the Tua de Donin, links to all three episodes in the video description below. So in today's episode, I will be discussing the role of sunlight in the chemical manufacturing operations of this ancient Irish civilization. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button so that you do not miss the new videos when they premiere every single week. If you want to help support the channel, just go to thelandofchem.com. You can pick up a limited first edition print copy of the book. Grab yourself some Land of Chem merch. Either way, all the orders mean the world to me. Thank you all so much for your support. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. So this is a diagram of Newgrange, the largest and most prominent of the ancient Irish passage chamber mound structures. And you can see here that the internal configuration of this structure is relatively simple compared to that of the Egyptian pyramids that we have been discussing. However, you will also notice that there are some very striking similarities that are directly related to the functionality of this structure. So starting here on the left, we have the opening to the passage that leads into this large vaulted central reaction chamber here, which is flanked by three smaller ancillary chambers. And here on the outside of the structure, you can see the curb stone, which is an instruction manual containing a formula for the chemical reaction sequence that once occurred inside of these chambers. This here is the primary opening into the passage system and this component up here at the top is what they quite indolently call a quote-unquote roof box. So what the hell is a roof box? Well, it is exactly what it looks like. It is an intake shaft that was utilized to funnel air and also sunlight into the primary reaction chamber, which you can see here. And these are the ancillary housings that are located around the central vaulted chamber. And inside of these housings, there are red granite bowls or basins, which once held the initial reactant in the chemical transformation process. And this is an image of the central vaulted ceiling of the main primary reaction chamber, which to any of you that have been following my work should immediately remind you, for example, of the tiered vaulted chambers of the Red Pyramid of Dashur. So how did this system work? Well, it begins by filling the three basins inside of the primary reaction chamber with marcasite, otherwise known as pyrite or iron disulfide. The passage is then filled with water, and as air flows into the chamber through the intake shaft, the moist airflow circulating inside of the chamber gradually oxidizes the iron disulfide, transforming it into green vitriol or ferrous sulfate. And the chemical equation for this reaction is as follows. Iron disulfide plus oxygen and water creates ferrous sulfate and sulfuric acid. So now that we know the reaction sequence, let's apply that formula to the configuration of this chamber system. So we are going to load our initial reactant into the basins located back here. This area up here at the front of the structure will be filled with water. The air will be flowing into these chambers through the air intake shaft located here, and that moist airflow will circulate in this three housing primary reaction chamber. So now that you can visualize this entire reaction within the system, let's now apply that visualization to these symbols on the curve stone, and let's see exactly what this stone is telling us. So there are six different symbols depicted here. We have these three 
diamond or square shapes back here. We have these undulating lines at the bottom of the stone here. We have these spiral glyphs coming in from the right here in this direction. And then we have these three large spiral symbols here. Then we have this crystalline shape coming out right here. And we have this one on the far right side over here. So can you see it yet? How about now? So just as I described before, you have your initial reactant, your iron disulfide, loaded into the basins back here. This area here at the front of the structure will be filled with water, represented by those undulating lines flowing into the structure. The air will be flowing in through that air intake shaft located here, and these symbols represent the airflow moving into the chamber. And that moist airflow will circulate inside of this three housing primary reaction chamber, which you can see here depicted by this large triple spiral symbol, which literally represents the airflow circulating inside of those three different chambers. Inside of this primary reaction chamber, this moist circulation of airflow will be transforming your iron disulfide reactant into the crystalline ferrous sulfate product, which you can see here. And like I've said before, the curbstone of Newgrange is literally an instruction manual describing exactly how this structure operates. And it shows a rudimentary chemical equation, this exact same chemical reaction sequence. All right, everyone, just a quick reminder that if you want to help support the channel, just check out thelandofchem.com. I have some brand new Land of Chem merch. There's awesome new hoodies, long sleeve shirts, the original Land of Chem t-shirts with the new fifth degree logo, and of course, the OG second degree logo designed by yours truly. And don't forget, limited first edition print copies of the book, The Land of Chem, an initiation into ancient chemistry through the degrees of the Egyptian pyramids, all now available at thelandofchem.com. So if you want to help support the channel, just go to the website. You can grab a copy of the book, pick up some Land of Chem merch. Either way, all of the orders mean more to me than words can possibly ever describe. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. All right, now on to the ultimate secrets of this ancient chemical manufacturing process. And I'm sure that all of you have heard the narrative about these structures being burial tombs. And once a year, the light from the winter solstice lights up the inside of the chambers for some ritualistic purpose. Okay, great. Thanks a lot, conventional archaeology, for yet another fantastic zero-effort explanation that completely negates the intellectual capabilities of this ancient civilization. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope I have shown you by now, as evidenced in the previous episode about the properties of Egyptian blue, to never underestimate these structures or the chemical engineers that built them. And it is with the greatest pleasure that I can finally reveal to you this. And this article describes a biohydrometallurgical UV production of ferrous sulfate heptahydrate crystals from pyrite present in coal tailings. And the abstract for this experiment is as follows. The objective of this work was to develop a biohydrometallurgical UV radiation route to produce ferrous sulfate heptahydrate from the pyrite present in coal tailings. The experimental work was carried out with a pyrite concentrate obtained from gravimetric processing of coal tailing. At laboratory scale, it was performed the oxidation of pyrite in an aqueous medium in packed bed leaching columns in an oxidizing environment with the presence of acidophilic bacteria. The recirculation of the liquor allowed obtaining an iron rich extract. The conversion of iron 3 plus to iron 2 plus was performed using the ultraviolet irradiation. Finally, the solution was evaporated, allowing the formation of iron sulfate crystals. The results determined that it is possible to produce high purity ferrous sulfate heptahydrate crystals using coal tailings as a raw material. Link to the full article in the video description below. So Newgrange and the passage chamber structures of Ireland were massive heap leaching operations and the final conversion of the iron ions was achieved by allowing the solution to absorb UV light for several days at the end of the production sequence. And of course, 
my interpretation of these symbols would not be valid if this final stage of UV sunlight conversion of the product wasn't depicted on the curbstone. Well, look at what we have over here, ladies and gentlemen. Radiating sunlight up here in the top right corner, shining ultraviolet rays down on the solution containing the crystalline product. And this spectacular UV chemistry allowed them to produce pure, high-quality ferrous sulfate crystals, which you can see here. And I went into great detail in episode 29, describing exactly how this chemical, along with a variety of other chemicals like white phosphorus, were being manufactured and utilized by the Tuatodonin. And to this date, I am still the only researcher that has ever proposed an interpretation of the symbols on the Newgrange curbstone. Lots more coming up on this ancient civilization and the function of these ancient iris structures coming up soon. So if you haven't already, please subscribe and stay tuned. Everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 67, UV, Biohydrometallurgical Chemistry at Newgrange, and one of my favorite revelations thus far. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video, and in the next episode in the series, we will be returning to our odyssey of Egyptian pyramid chemical manufacturing with the chemical analysis of the Red Pyramid Staining Part 3. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button so that you do not miss the new videos when they premiere every single week. If you want to help support the channel, just go to thelandofchem.com. You can pick up a limited first edition print copy of the book, grab some Land of Chem merch. Either way, all the orders mean the world to me from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much for the support. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at the land of chem. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's episode. So I will see you next time. Yo, are you still watching this? Please subscribe to the land of chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button. New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now.